read the scripture in John 13 from verse 33. John chapter 13 verse 33. We just spoke about Peter that that came to Jesus and Jesus said, where I'm going, you can't go with. And Peter said, Lord, where you go, I will go. And there's nowhere you will go where I will not follow. And I know myself, Lord, I'm this charismatic Peter. I'm the one that will follow you no matter what. And, and Peter's saying something there that really grabbed my attention. Just for a second, it grabbed my attention and I, and I just couldn't get away from it again. When he said, Lord, I will die for you. That's, <laughs> you don't just say I'm going to die for you if, if it's not really something that you mean. Am I right? Lord, I will die for you. But you know, the problem is here that I know that in his heart, Peter at that moment, in his charismatic way, He's feeling that way. But you know, God knows us even further than your, your personality and your charismatic ways. And because a lot of times I feel like I'm going to do something. I, I, let's be honest. You know, come the first year you've got these new rules and I'm going to attend church and I'm going to do things and I'm going to change things in the spirit. Things are going to change in your life this year, my friend. And whatever you stand for will not prosper here. Yeah. Things will change in your life because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world or in you. So what happened is Jesus saw what Peter is busy with. And the moment Peter came and said, I will die for you, the Lord knew that's not, that's not really the truth. That's how you feel now. So sometimes I feel very psyched up. I can get psyched up very easily. Is there anyone that says, yes, me too? Now, when people talk about things, I can get really excited and say, yes, I'm in, I'm in. You know, it's like people, I, that's why I, I love the charismatic church, especially the Pentecostal churches. I like them because they get so excited and sometimes the music gets so fast and I, I can just say, I'm going with you, I'm going with you. Hey, I'm going with you. I'm just excited and happy about everything. Amen. Especially when people say, let's do this here. Let's go to the gym. And, let's, then I feel, and tomorrow morning when I get up and I woke up and I, I, I'm not feeling so, I, uh, there was not a good night's rest. And then I think, yeah, I must go and get on that treadmill and go to gym. And you know, Last night, I felt so positive about this. But all of a sudden this morning, things have changed. Ever happened to you? you now on your way, you make a decision. When I come back from Nels Pratt, I'm going to get into my Techies, my Essex, my Saconis, whatever is your favorite. And I'm going to do a jock. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. And when, then, then when you're in Nelspreet, you stop at McDonald's. And there's something in McDonald's that just drains your energy. That when you're back at home, you don't want to do any exercise. <laughs> and God knew this. Jesus knew this when Peter was talking to him. He said, that's how you feel now because you're all psyched up. Because I'm, I'm busy ministering to you and you feel like wherever you go, Lord, I will go. But, but tomorrow, things are going to happen in your life and you're not going to feel that positive anymore. And, and, and you know the story. You know the story. When Peter was co confronted by a little girl three times he denied Christ but let's read from verse 33 my children I will be with you only a little longer you will look for me and just as I told the Jews so I tell you now where I am going, you cannot come. A new command. Can you say command? A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. 
a new command I give you, love one another. Let's just stop there for a moment. A new command. I, I don't know about you, but do you want to drive the old car or the new car? I don't want to use the example of wife. Old. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to drive the old car or the new? Can I say who wants to drive the new car? There's two cars in your garage. The one that you were driving since you were a student, and then somewhere you, you, you buy yourself a nice new car. Do you want to come to church in the old or the new? The new, of course. Why? Why the new one? It smells better. It looks better. Yes, it's a more comfortable ride. Now, it's exactly the same. I don't understand when Jesus gives us something new that we still want to hang and cling on to the old stuff. Am I right? A new commandment. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Now, when I read this, I, I can't stop myself of thinking about Peter's love, that, that in his psyched up atmosphere, he was really spot on saying, Lord, I will love you and I will die for you. And Jesus said, love each other just as I have loved you. And God loved us so much that he gave up his own life for you and me. This is the reason why we can stand at this communion table this morning. He gave his life. And if that is the way Jesus loved us, how should we love each other? Now, church, can you get up from your blue chair and walk to somebody and give them a hug and say, I love you with the love of the Lord. Somebody strange. Come on, walk to somebody. We call it hey, holy chaos. I love you with the love of the Lord brother here's the duck I can't hear that I love you with the love of the Lord and I will explain why this is so important not only to keep you awake and to get you involved in the sermon that's not the reason that's part of the reason but that's not the reason are you with me it's because of the next verse Ursula are you sitting down thank you <laughs> this is the reason by this everyone are you part of everyone it means everyone here and everyone around you, everyone at work, everyone out of church, everyone in Barberton. Everyone means everyone. Everyone that can see what's going on. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now, the word disciples mean follower of Christ. So what Jesus is actually saying here, by this people will know that you are following me, Christ, Jesus, your Lord and your Savior, because you love one another. The, the correct word there in the Greek is to imitate, to do as someone else is doing, to do the same than what someone else is doing. Now, can you help me? Who wants to help me? God, you, come and help me. There's, there's a little guy. Yes, come on. I need you to imitate me. Can you do that? imitate do exactly what i'm doing all right are you with me can you see she's is she doing is she doing the imitate thing thank you love you can go and sit down she did a very good job so when we as followers of of christ we need to imitate what he what he has done for us it means that if he died for our sins, we, we're supposed to die unto ourselves for each other. Then there will not be a lot of pain in church anymore because you've died. I've seen dead people before. You can do to them whatever you want. 
they won't complain. They won't moan. They won't say, come on, you're hurting me. They're dead. <laughs> yes, they're dead happy. And if we want to imitate Christ, let's be honest. I'm not here to make friends this morning. Sorry for that. But I'm here to bring the word of God in a very direct manner so that you can understand this and know what is the truth. If you don't imitate, 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 if you don't imitate Christ, you will not get the price. You will not go to heaven. If you don't imitate him the correct way, you will not receive eternal life. And to imitate him means that when you imitate Christ, when you do as Christ, then you will receive the reward of heaven, eternal life in heaven. I just want to make this clear. Eternal life is not the reward. We are all going to live for eternity. Where are you going to live? you just making the decision maybe today. Eternal hell or eternal heaven. You're gonna, there's going to be an eternity. And you can't get away from that. So if you don't imitate Christ, you're not going to receive eternal life in heaven. You're going to receive eternal life in hell. This is hectic stuff. And I would not like to see myself or anyone here receive the wrong destination as a reward. And the problem I have with Peter and the words of Peter is that in his psyched up situation, he was, he was correct. But later on, if we imitate Peter by denying Christ, and that's the problem we have, church, is that we can't tell people, imitate me, because if they imitate you, their destination might be wrong. Can somebody say, yes, I need to work? Is there any of us that can say, please, my friends, you can imitate me? Because where I, if you do what I do, you will receive heaven as a reward and a destination. Can you say that? If not, there's some work to be done here. Maybe some forgiveness to be asked. And I've got a problem because, you know, we keep people away from Jesus. And the moment we keep people away from Jesus, that moment when you are an instrument of keeping people away or to stand in the place of, of receiving the joy of the Lord, then there is no more strength in your religion. So this morning I want to say to you that if you want to imitate Christ, there is a different destination for your life. And that is something that you can decide right now. I can decide right now. But sometimes we are our own biggest enemy because we are the ones standing in the way of touching Jesus. And it's God's heart that we must be allowed or that we as His children, His disciples, will not only imitate Him but also be part of touching Jesus. Christ and touching the Spirit of God and touching each other. Can you just touch the person next to you? The moment you touch someone, touch her, touch her in Jesus' name. The moment you touch, what, what, what's happening? Can you feel that? Some of your senses are starting to pick up on the touch and the feeling. Amen? You know, when I love somebody, I want to touch them. Is it not so Jy wil haai jou skrimminkel van jou druk en dan omvat. Maar hy moest doe het. We want to touch, we want to do that. Why? Because we love one another. My wife's not here, so I can talk about her. <laughs> I won't do that because you will all tell her and phone her. I've done this, be but then before I got home, people have phoned her. She said, what did you say about me in church? Well, she was here in the first service, you know, I chose that woman with my own eyes. And I love her. And, and even though sometimes there's an argument, because I must explain to her that sometimes she's wrong, you understand? Even though sometimes there's an argument, 
I've never ever in my life been in the dog box sleeping with the dogs or sleeping in the guest room. Never ever. And even though things aren't 100%, I'm still sleeping next to her because, you know, if I don't touch her, I can't really sleep. And I sleep, and, and, and even in the summer times, all that, in the winter, I can, I can just wrap around her. She don't mind that. But, but in the summertime, even if just our feet are touching, I feel comfortable and I can sleep. There's something about touching the one that you love. And you know, God has this heart of, He wants to touch you. He wants to touch your life. He wants to come and intervene in your situation. God wants to come and change your heart, change your mind, change the way you are acting, change the way you are walking so that people can imitate you and receive eternal life in heaven as a reward destination. So something had to happen with Peter because he denied Christ. And we all know what happened in Acts when they've received the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was the one that's giving him the, 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 the strength and the boldness and the courage to stand before 3,000 people and say, let me explain to you about my Savior. Let me tell you about my King. Let me tell you about Jesus Christ, the one that was crucified. Let, let me tell you about the one I love. Let me tell you. There is just something about having the Holy Spirit in your life to give you the strength, the power to carry on. Without the Holy Spirit, church, you will not be able to say, imitate me. I will take you to Christ. Because what I'm doing, very soon you will realize what I'm doing is I'm doing what Christ is doing for me. And I've, I, I'm busy. I'm not just busy with doing life. I'm busy doing discipling. I'm a disciple. I'm busy changing people around me. I'm a life changer. I'm a town changer. I'm a city changer. I'm a church changer. I'm a neighborhood changer. I'm changing people's mind because I'm imitating Christ and I've got the Holy Spirit in my heart and in my life that no matter what, people will change because He's the light of this world. And when His light shines in and through me, there is no other way. You know, the problem with light, let's be open and honest about this, is you will always draw some cockroaches and you always draw some moths and all the hohaikis. Amen. That's true. So it's not always easy. You will get tough people. Tough people. But you know the wonderful thing is if you imitate Christ and you witness about His love, I promise you they will be so jealous and that will be a good jealous. It will be not a nasty jealousy. They will see what you have, I want. Say, what I have, I can give you for free but it will change something it might be for free but it will change something and the cost of that is a lot it will change your life and it will cost everything even though it's for free so do you see what John of Peter is doing here in the book of John chapter 13 saying father I will follow you So Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow me. But you will follow later. And Peter asked, Lord, why can't, can't I follow you? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will disown me three times. We all know the story. That's exactly what happened. And a lot of times in my life, I must be honest, I've got this Peter mentality. Lord, I will, I will, I will do this. And I'm, and how do you say it? When push comes to shove, it's not always so easy to stand up and say, he's my king. It's not so easy to say, no, thank you. It's not so easy when the peer pressure is there. So I will not do this and I will not follow this. But then 
I've read this, and this is something that we just need to understand. When Jesus in um, Mark 10 comes and, 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 and all the disciples, Jesus is sitting there, and all the disciples are standing around, and, and it's not around Jesus, but something very strange. I want you to pick up on these little things lying around this morning. And, and, and just maybe it will change your life for the better. Jesus said, and, and I'm reading there that parents brought their children to be touched by Jesus. Have you read that? There is something about touching someone. When I touch someone, there is a connection. So listen to this. Parents brought their children to Jesus because they want their children to be touched by Jesus. What will be the reason for that? Now, when I bring my children to the doctor, to be touched by the doctor, I want, I want this knowledge and I want there to be some healing and I want them to be some intervention in this situation of mine. So I'm sure that's exactly the reason why people, when, when you bring your child to me as the pastor, I know what you expect from me is maybe there's something wrong. Maybe there's a challenge in school. Maybe this child is being bullied or something. And I say, what can I do? How can I touch and bless this child and pray for? Am I right? Have you been in a situation? But, but, but I want to explain it even more practical this morning. Uh, who can, what can I, how can I do this? Andre, please bring me your daughter. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. If she's scared, take that. You with daddy. Don't worry. You with daddy. Look at this. Don't even turn around. Just come to me. Just stand here looking at me. When he comes, when he brings his child, he's with her. She's not alone. So when the parents brought their children, to Jesus they were also there and I've got a problem that in church I don't know if you've seen it people bring their children and they drop them off at church and then they leave again they're not bringing their children they are sending their children and do you think there's any way you can get this little girl that, that trusts you look she's hanging in there for dear life she trusts you with everything is there any way that you can send her to me without you being with her how will she trust me but we're sending our children to the Lord and they must trust Lord. they will only trust when they see I'm your friend and you are me and we are friends and we are having a bride together they will feel comfortable and also come to me when you send them am I right so without you being comfortable around Jesus I promise you your children and your followers will not follow and will not imitate thank you Andre. do you understand that Oh, sorry, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not very charismatic about this. <laughs> but I want to be very practical about this. Imitate Christ. Be his friend. And people will follow. Can you say, I want to imitate. Can you say, I'm already imitating Christ I'm already a true disciple not only by mouth but in my deeds because this and I want to end up I want to wrap this up now we need to change the way we speak to a hard thing of acting on what we say there will never be any fruit on what you say but there will always be fruit on what you are doing. Can I explain this more practical? I can explain to you every day of my life and talk to you about how I'm going to be uh, a, a, a fitness guy and a guru and I'm going to eat right. I can talk about this the whole time, but that will not change anything if I don't do what I say. And in church, we've got this problem that we are saying, yes, Lord. We're going to, yes, Lord. But we're not doing that. And now you say, Father, but I'm saying all these things. 
and I'm proclaiming all these things. Where is the fruit? And hear the Spirit of God this morning. Maybe just knocking on your door and say, where is your deeds? What are you doing? So that there can be fruit. Why don't you just imitate me? Why don't you just do something that might be scary? But trust me, and I will change your life. So, so for, for this faith family this morning, I want to come and say, if in faith we will stand and follow and trust the Holy Spirit and imitate Christ, I want to make this very clear this morning. It will be the best year of your life. God will come through for you every time. God will be there with you every time. Because just as in the scripture we just read in Mark 10, He wants to touch. And you know, then this, the disciples, the followers of Christ, the imitators of Christ came and said, Please don't bother Jesus. Please don't, don't bring your children here to be touched by the Lord. And Jesus said, Hey, stop your nonsense. And that's, that's my way I'm reading it. That they <laughs> said, don't stop them. Bring them. Let them come. Jesus saw what was happening. He was very displeased with the disciples. Can you say this word, displeased? If you are not doing, if you're not imitating, this is part of your displeasing, displeased with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. There's a lot of children out there. And I'm not only talking about little children. I mean, some of your children already grown up, married, varsity, etc. Bring them to the Lord. Bring them in prayer. Bring them in, in an act when they come to visit. Bring them to the Lord. Bring them to church. Talk to them. Witness to them about what God has done. And see how they will change. This morning, this is the most practical way. Jesus came and he said, I want to be part of you. I want my body to touch your body and to be part of you. Is this communion family. So we've got this privilege this morning coming to the table of the Lord. I said, Lord, I want to come and be touched by you. Come and change my heart. Come and change the way I'm thinking. Come and change the way I'm, I'm talking about things and not follow it up by doing what I'm saying. Come, Lord, come and change my heart. Come and change my life. We've got this wonderful opportunity. It might be your last this is grace time that we are living. This might, might be your last. But don't you come this morning and say, Father, I want to be touched. I want to be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Be part of me. Jesus was sitting in the upper room with his disciples. And he knew who is the doers sitting around the tables and who is just the talkers. And as we are sitting here, he already, because he's God, he know what, what your decision will be right now. Are you here for the right reason? Are you here to be touched? Or are you here to say, listen, I'm, I just, this is peer pressure, you know. I just got to be part of this because this is the right thing to do. It's not like buying a TV license. It's the right thing to do. This is serious stuff. Come and be touched. So, I'm not going to go out there. I need you this morning to come to the table and say, Father, I want to be the one bowing, giving my life. Be touched by me. I want to be the one that imitates Christ. 
ਮਾਹੌਲ